Hi everyone, there have been some really exciting developments in the Blender community over the last few months, especially in relation to Python and building Python add-ons for Blender. You may or may not have heard of it, but there's a relatively new add-on called Serpens, which basically brings visual scripting functionality into the Blender interface. So what that means is you can actually build add-ons for Blender inside of Blender using nodes. So this by itself is already really cool and I'm excited to tell you more about it, but I noticed that in their latest version they've added functionality for EasyBPY. Now if you don't know, EasyBPY is a module that I've created along with the help of some other contributors to basically simplify the use of the Python API in Blender. So it basically means you can write really simple and plain English code to control different aspects of a Blend file. So combining these two things, an elegant node-based interface for doing visual scripting in Blender with a simplified version of interacting with the Python API, I think it's going to allow for a whole new wave of people to get into making add-ons for Blender. Now I'm not going to give you a full tutorial for how to use Serpens because there's already other content available for that, but I am going to give you a demonstration of how to use Serpens with EasyBPY and maybe explain why I think there may be a renaissance of Python development coming for Blender. So I have a scene here with my jug model from the modular metals pack and there are two area lights in here. So if I sit here, I might have the idea and think, okay, I want to write a script, an add-on that's going to randomize the colors of these lights just for fun. If I was new to Blender, I would think, okay, well, I need to look up how to write add-ons, how to format the different interface elements, how to write an operator, and then how to plug this all together just to put something on a panel that's going to randomize the lights. So that's a really big barrier to entry right there. With Serpens, that barrier to entry has been removed. So if you look at your editors, you will see that there's a new visual scripting window. So if you click on that, you'll be able to create a new node graph, which is just the same as making like a new node tree for a material or the world shaders or a new geometry nodes tree or anything like that. So this is exactly the same as every other node workflow in Blender. You can have multiple node trees, but it's nice to just keep things simple. Then say in the 3D view here, I wanted to add my own panel to make my own buttons. I would just make a new panel node like I've already got here. And then they have this really cool eyedropper functionality where if you click on this, you can choose any area in the blend file that you want to add a new panel. So you can literally just click up the top here, select panel, and then select location. So what this is going to do is it's going to tell Serpens that we want to make a new panel up here in the 3D view. So we don't have to memorize exactly what to type in code. We can just use the eyedropper tool and choose in Blender where we want to add something. Now I've already done this with this node here. So I've chosen the 3D view user interface. And I can name the category my category, and I've already compiled this, so that's here on the side. And then this new panel is going to be called the tool panel, so I've got that here. Now I should know that every time you make a change in a Serpens node tree, you need to press the compile button up here, and it will recompile the code. So we can think to ourselves, ideally, we'd like a button on this panel that we can press that will change the color of the lighting. So sure, let's just do that. If I press Shift A and then search for button, we can get a button node. You see, it's all very intuitive. And if we want, we can connect the panel output of our panel to the interface input of our button. Now, if I compile this, not much is going to happen because there's not really any information for what this button should do. And that's because we don't have any functionality going. So let's make that. Notice down here I have an operator node. And what an operator is, it's basically a container for an operation. So a significant piece of functionality that your add-on is going to provide. So I've placed this down and I've given it a name, randomize colors, quite appropriate for what we're doing. And if you've made an operator in the button search box here, you can click on that and then choose the operator. So randomize colors. So if we compile this now, you will see that new button has appeared on our panel. Now when we click this, nothing happens, and that's because we don't have anything plugged into the operator. It's waiting for us to give it something to execute. For the time being though, I can rename the button to randomize colors. And I'm going to delete the button node I prepared earlier. So let me bring these two over. Before I show you how to write a simple script and show the operator how to execute it, I just want to make a note about this add to panel node, because this is very important. Much like how we are placing our button on the panel we've created, we can actually place the button anywhere we like in Blender. So if I unplug this and bring this over, if we press the eyedropper tool on the add to panel button, we can see lots more options appear. We can choose anywhere in the Blender interface to place it. So I don't know, let's say I want to add it to my own add-on, Hold Tools. I can pick any panel that I've already got here, press the append panel button, and then let's plug in the button, recompile, and there it is, the randomized color button. So yes, if you like, you can add functionality to pre-existing add-ons and just anything you like. 
But okay, I'm going to reset that now. I just thought that was an interesting note to make. So let's recompile that and go back to our category. So for writing code to execute, this is where EasyBPY is going to come in handy. If we go down in the Serpent settings here, under the settings tab, you can see at the very bottom, there's the EasyBPY section. Now in here, you have a choice of choosing the EasyBPY module from a text file in the Blender file, or you can press the folder button to find it externally. Now, if you do that, it will automatically add it to the Blend file you're using, so it will always be accessible. So if I take a look up here and go to EasyBPY, we can see that I have the entire module here. Now, usually when you're writing code like this, you would need to import the different elements from the module manually so you can actually use them in the script. But because Serpens is doing this for us automatically, we don't need to do this because everything we write in here is going to be plugged straight into our new add-on through the run script node. So let's take a look at this. Run script is another node which does well, exactly what it says. You can choose a text file and it will run all of the Python code contained in there. So we're going to write something in here in a minute. But connecting this to our operator is very easy. We just drag the operator output to the run script input. So now if I compile this, every time we click on the button, it's going to call this operator, which is going to run all of the code in this text file. Now, the reason why this is significant is because I didn't need to know any of the codes. I didn't have to write any interface classes. I didn't have to register anything. I didn't have to do any of that crazy, boring Python stuff just to put something on the interface. I made four nodes. I used the eyedropper tool to pick exactly where I wanted to put the new thing on the interface and I pressed compile and it's just there. Now, of course, when you're done with your add-on in Serpens, you can export it to a zip file so you can share it with other people. You're allowed to sell the things you make with Serpens. They even have a marketplace if you want to share your content in the Serpens community. Now you can look into that if you want to, but for now, I'm going to show you a very short script for randomizing the colors of the lights in the scene. So as I said, we don't need to import anything from ECBPY because it's done automatically. So the first line I'm going to write is select underscore all underscore lights. Now, what do you think this does? It selects all of the lights in the scene. It's very easy. So if I compiled this now, and I'm just going to select the plane, for example, and then if I press randomize colors, you'll see that we're now selecting the lights. All it's doing is one line selecting every light in the scene. But now we have those lights selected. How do we modify them? Well, we can write this lovely little loop for light in selected objects. So what this function does is it returns every object that we have selected. So we're selecting all the lights and we're saying for every object we have selected. So in two lines, we know that we're about to perform a change to every single light in the scene. But how do we make a random color? Well, doing randomized things in Python requires that we do actually import something from a random module. So I'm going to write that line in now at the top from random import uniform. So uniform is a bit of an oddly named thing for getting a random floating point value. Now, of course, when it comes to composing colors, we need an R, a G and a B value, a red, green and blue. For demonstration, if I clicked on the area light and then clicked on color, if we go to RGB, you can see that the R, G and B values are just between a zero and a one value. So we have RGB, we want to make a random value for each of them. So we can do R equals uniform in brackets zero, one. So R is going to become a random value between zero and one. And we can do the same for the others. So now we have a random value for the red, the green, and the blue. Now, how do we assign this to the light? Well, it's very simple. Light dot data dot color equals, and then in brackets, RGB. And that's all we need to do. So if I save this, then compile, then press randomize colors, ta-da, every light in the scene will now have a randomized color. So what we've done is we've just created an add-on without having to write any interface code whatsoever. We don't need to worry about any of this stupid syntax, any dumb naming conventions, registering or unregistering things. No, we just do all the fun stuff, make a few nodes, click where we want something to go on the interface and it's ready. And of course, you can save the add-on and export it to a zip file and share it with anyone else. Now, there are so many other things you can do with Serpens and EasyBPY. I've only shown you like two functions here and four nodes from Serpens. But the main thing I want you to take away from this video is that there are now options for people for who the barrier for entry in terms of the effort and the frustration and the understanding of the syntax and conventions for making Python add-ons was too high. There is now a simplified alternative available. However, Serpens is a paid add-on, so just keep that in mind. It's not much anyway, it's just $15. If you did want to pick up that add-on, and if you want to support this channel as well, I've left my affiliate link down below. But before we wrap this up, I'm just going to show you a few other cool things you can do with the interfaces for the panels. So let's move these out of the way. Uh, I'm going to make a new box node now because I want to have a cool looking box around my button. So I'm going to plug the panel into the box here. 
and then from the box I'm going to plug into the button. So if we compile this now, you can see there's now a box around the button, but what good is this? Well, we can scale up the Y value on the box and compile this again, so we can have a thicker button. I don't know why, I just think it's nicer to have, you know, a nice button there. But what if we wanted more things on this panel? Well, let's say if I take a label node, and I'm going to put some text in, so maybe subscribe. Let's do that. I want the label to come before the button, so I'm going to plug the box into the label. But then you'll notice, wait, there's no interface output on the label to plug into the button to go next. Well, that's not how it works. We need to press the plus sign on this box value to give us another interface output, and then this one is going to go to the button. So we do the label first, and then the button, and now we compile. So we have the subscribe label, and then randomize colors. But I'm going to set the Y value down to 1 again, just to make this a bit more neat. There we go, nice and contained. But another thing you might notice is that there are icon inputs on these nodes. So yes, that means you can put any icon you like next to any interface element. Now again, this is very cool because if you were doing this manually with Python, you would need to know the exact string ID for each icon to be able to use it. But with Serpens, if we place down an icon node and press select icon, we literally have a library we can choose from. So if I search in the search bar here, light, we have a bunch of different icons for lighting. So maybe I'll choose this third one along here and that's going to select it. And then I'm going to drag this as the input for the icon, for the label, and maybe even for the button as well, just for fun. And if we compile, those icons have appeared. So you can see that just with absolutely no code whatsoever, we can build these lovely add-on interface panels. And well, that's how easy it is. No more digging through documentation, figuring out how to write the panels, how to attach them to other places, where to get the icons, all of that, no, all gone. And I think the great thing is, even for people that do want to do just manual add-on development with Python, this Serpens visual scripting can act as a really cool reference because I don't know how to attach things to like most of the Blender interface, but I can do it with Serpens, then export the add-on and take a look at the exported code, and that will give me information for what's possible for future development. So I guess that raises the question, is this good enough for me to do visual scripting only for my future add-ons? And I think the answer to that is that for simple add-ons, yes, but for complex add-ons like Biogen, not really, because complex multi-file add-ons can get pretty huge, pretty complex. It's just really not viable for doing it in a node-based interface, especially if there's lots of bespoke and complex algorithms going on, where you've got dozens and dozens, maybe even hundreds of different individual segments that would need to be put into different text files for that to work. I think that might be a bit too much for this method, but for simple add-ons, I think it's perfect. For example, Holt Tools, which I have here, I could remake this entirely with Serpens and the text editor. Now, if that wasn't already cool enough, Serpens is the second add-on I've seen so far that has an integrated tutorial interface. I'm sure there are more add-ons that do this, but the first one I saw was the Human Generator, and I made a big point about that in my Human Generator video, about how it had this excellent tutorial you can interact with inside of the 3D view. Serpens does something similar, so if I make a new add-on, in the top right you can see a Start Tutorial button. It's going to add a tutorial node, which I think is really cool. We can increase the size of this interface, move it off to the side, and then press Next and it's got a whole table of contents. So if you flick through this, it's gonna teach you about what Serpens is and give you a rough breakdown of all the different data types and how to make the add-on and all of that. And as it goes through, it's even gonna spawn nodes to show you what they do. And I think that's really fantastic because again, removing the barrier for entry for people that wanna make add-ons, this is just amazing. So I'm really impressed with what they've made so far. I think it's a massive step in the right direction. I think the design is right. It fits right in with other Blender node-based workflows. I like that they're supporting EasyBPY. This gives me more of a reason to develop that module more in the future. And like I said, I think the combination of these two things, the node-based interface and the simplified language, is going to bring in a new wave of people that wanted to make tools for other people, but just couldn't wrap their head around the syntax and the conventions and all of that boring stuff. So hopefully this has caught your interest. I understand that code-based things can be quite boring for a lot of people. So if I just keep clicking this button, maybe the pretty lights will make you even more interested. Like I said, if you want to check it out, I'll leave my affiliate link down below and I'll leave the EasyBPY link there as well. Feel free to sign up to the Patreon if you want to support my work and get your name at the end of videos. You can also follow me on social media to keep up to date with content and join our Discord server to take part in discussions, art challenges, and show your work. So thanks for watching everyone. Stay safe and I will see you next time.